Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. As we expect more snow chances in the coming days, street crews are continuing their cleanup process. Here's a look at the city of Sioux Falls' snow alert tracker. Now, purple means it is scheduled for snow pickup. Dark blue means everything is complete and red means cleanup has not started. There's a lot of blue on the map with snow available to be picked up in central Sioux Falls. Meanwhile, you can keep track of our changing weather conditions by downloading our Kelam Storm Tracker app. You can find live Doppler radar and also get views of conditions across the state thanks to our great live cam network. And if you capture pictures or video of whatever's happening in your area, send it over to us at youshareatkelam.com or tag us on social media. We are expecting some frigid temperatures to be chilling our region soon, right Megan? Yes, we are. Those high temperatures are expected to be below zero as we head into this weekend and next week. We'll take a look at those in just a little bit. Right now, some very light snow showers moving through Sioux Falls at 21 degrees, a south wind at seven miles an hour. As we head around the region, the clouds are breaking up just slightly in Pier 31 right now. Northwest wind at 17. We have 24 in Yankton, 18 in Brookings, 15 in Sisseton, 26 in Mobridge, and 41 in Rapid City. We do have the south to southeast breeze here in eastern Kelowland that is staying very light. Some stronger winds are picking up in western South Dakota out of the north and west, bringing in much colder air. We do still have those thick clouds in central and eastern Kelowland and Rapid City and western South Dakota finally getting a little bit of a break from those clouds. We do have a few of those snow showers lingering mainly south of Huron towards Sioux Falls and these are going to stay very light as we head through the rest of your afternoon and evening totaling under an inch. So for today with those light snow showers in eastern Kelowland, 20 the high for Sioux Falls, 25 in Aberdeen, a breezy 35 in Pierre and a windy 38 in Rapid City. Then for tonight, partly cloudy skies, mostly light wind still, zero the low for Sioux Falls, three below in Aberdeen, two below in Pierre, and a breezy four in Rapid City where we do see another round of light snow showers picking up overnight. Then for the day tomorrow, we'll keep our winds mostly light again. Eight, the high for Sioux Falls in Aberdeen. Ten in Pier in a breezy 14 in Rapid City. We'll continue to watch that next round of light snow showers as it moves from west to east. Then on Friday, stronger north winds for everyone. Light snow shower chances for everyone. And slightly cooler yet. Six, the high for Sioux Falls. Three, Aberdeen. Five in Pier. And seven in Rapid City. We have those extremely cold temperatures on the way for the weekend and first part of next week where we'll see very cold wind chills as well. We'll take another look at those in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Megan. Hockey Day South Dakota is set for Saturday at the Premier Center in Sioux Falls. The event is a celebration of hockey started six years ago by the Sioux Falls Stampede. Teams are selected by the South Dakota Amateur Hockey Association, and this year's games will feature Watertown and Brandon Valley. Hockey day means just everything for this program. I'm not even sure if we've had a hockey day in South Dakota where Brandon gets to be recognized. Uh, but the fact that we're recognized and get to represent hockey is a big deal for this program. Yeah, I think so. The Bantam game will begin at 10 a.m., followed by JV at noon and Varsity at 2. Tickets are $12 for all three games, plus entry to the Sioux Falls Stampede and Omaha Lancers game at 6.05. Usually this time of year, we're telling you about snowstorms, but today it's all about rain and wind. Punished the East Coast overnight, flooded dozens of communities, and threatens additional flooding today. Michael George reports from New Jersey. This car was no match for rising floodwaters in Saddle River, New Jersey, as thousands of people up and down the East Coast woke up to find streets underwater. It all came from a very powerful weather system that dumped tons of rain and brought fierce winds. In Staten Island, New York, the wind uprooted a massive tree and brought down power lines. I heard a noise, but with the what goes on on the street, I never thought to, you know, to look. And of all the, le all the trees on the street, why this one? In Norwich, Connecticut, streets are flooded after a partial collapse of the Fitchville Pond Dam. A flood warning was issued Wednesday morning with officials concerned that more of the dam could give way. Overnight, the storm also took aim at parts of Maryland. This is by far the highest water we've seen in a long while. 
In Middle River, Maryland residents say the rain came in fast and there was little time to prepare. No, it was probably two, two and a half foot of water down by the waterfront. And uh, luckily our house is raised up, so we, we made out okay. But the people that don't have the houses raised up, they were, they were probably within inches of, you know, getting all wet. Forecasters say many of these areas will have little time to dry out. Another storm is expected this weekend. Michael George, CBS News. In national developments, Hunter Biden has stirred a political frenzy by showing up in the front row at a House Oversight Committee hearing as Republicans are taking the first step toward holding him in contempt of Congress. The House Oversight and Judiciary Committees will each vote today on contempt resolutions against President Joe Biden's son for defying a congressional subpoena. Republicans subpoenaed Hunter Biden to testify behind closed doors in December, but he refused to comply, insisting he will only testify in public. If the committees approve the contempt resolutions as expected, they will go to the full house for consideration.